We call the name of Michael Brown. We call his name so that he will not be forgotten. We pray for his family. We pray for his community. We pray for his country in this world. For all of the deaths that, that people don't talk about, and it's for black girls who look like black men. When black girls who look like black men are murdered, for not succumbing to the cat calls of strangers, for not going home with men making promises of turning us back into women, for holding our girlfriends' hands tighter, when walking past a crowd full of men who've had way too much rejection to drink and is looking for a fight and is looking for a dyke and is looking for a reason to use their judgment to paint the cement with our blood. We are not remembered. Our deaths are so unceremonious. We die in the middle of the night at bus stops and dirty bathroom stalls. We are not remembered. They do not talk about us. They do not march for us. The feminists rarely start movements in our name. We don't even leave stains. We disappear. We prove that the answer for minority multiplication is society minus a triple threat, three less questions to have to worry about answering jokes. A woman, a black, and a gay all walk into the same bar, in the same body. Punchline, her life, punchline, her death, punch her lion naked and beaten in the alley of that bar with the words nigger and fag burned into her skin, using her last breath to ask God why her identity had to weigh so much they don't remember us, Zakia. We are not woman enough, not man enough, too Ella, not enough Trayvon Martin, don't look. Like we believe monthly, there is no market for us, no reason to believe that we could have been the next anything outside of shadows. Even our mothers can't figure out how to love us, can't believe that God gave you three burdens as a daughter. Fathers can't figure out who to protect us from, who to show us off to, don't know which guns to teach us how to use so they raise us. To believe that Alzheimer's is a disease that society catches after everyone's death. There's nothing special about our forgotten except for the fact that we are women, black and queer, feared by the police, the pulp, the prejudice, the people who want us to take off our hoodies, our sexuality, and be more memorable. It's hard enough to get them to talk about our Oscar Grant. How dare us ask them to make noise for our Sakia guns, the other black man, the ones who chose to be this way to look like we spent our lives practicing how to be targets. Black men are targets. We are just imitations, not even worthy of being considered trash. Never wanted to be considered trash so badly to at least be noticed. We know that you are not going to stop killing us but at least have enough decency to leave records of our deaths. Hang us on trees near streetlights. Give us names. Tell our mothers that you are sorry for their losses, even if you are not. Just talk about it. The black girls who look like black men wearing a quiet death as a cologne, even if you are going to kill us, at least start a conversation after we are gone. Thank you. Landmine. Now means inheriting the wrong birthright of color. The treacherous shoe of oil spill or mudslide or sandstorm or anything else God-given and sun-kissed mislabeled as a disaster. Means the first time you watch boys in the hood and fail to shroud the ice cube solidifying on the winter blue old English D hat from lean like a sarcastic smirk or the first time you find a connection to that movie Rosewood during a really racist encounter and allow your great-great-grandfather hanging lowercase R from your gangly to speak for you reckless as a snake jaw noose swallowing a black Floridian's brain See, landmine means knowing the geography of our bodies. Each tense muscle, a war-torn border, our eyes, a pair of silos, armed and ready and staring too long, is a missile test to get you bombed on. Young nation, stay focused. Landmine is not the 20-ounce can of iced tea. It's not the loud music coming out of Jordan Davis's car. It's not the bag of Skittles. It's not an alleged shoplifting. It's not a thrown punch or a commuter train in Oakland, California. It's not even the English quit walking out of our mouths unapologetic, but rather the ancient ownership in our grip. How everything we touch seems to become ours. Turn a handshake into a cotton gin. God and a basketball. How a bag of candy becomes coated him for Tuskegee survivors and Toby's given names. The landmines be everywhere I look now. Walking. 
through a gutted city after sunrise walking, through a gated suburb after sunset walking, like that sun is gated in my gut, it means the hood I find myself in. Draped over my shoulders, my head in its mouth, casting thugged out shadow like wall paint over those kind eyes my mama gave me means bringing beast birth into the genesis of the color spectrum as it would define me by my inability to emit light, only to absorb it. My very pigment, a stick-up kid. semi auto grip slick and ten feet tall with a face like a dark black alley in a broken glass tongue. See, black men are born into minefields, running full speed. Black men learn to run so fast, jump so high, because each inch of pavement is pressure point potential. Street catch you flat footed and watch that shrapnel sing through your bone like Nita, millimeter or Simone. Black men, no bullet like mosquito, blood hungry and devouring the most surrendered of our flesh back, cuffed into an arc, chest offered like a white flag, head cocked skyward like a telescope, thousand times zoom on a gun barrel supernova, burning the midnight from a young man's pupils. I hear a story like this every day on the news. Turns my body into a heavier lead. Brown skin, more clay more than clay. Hear the click, smell the smolder of gunpowder prey. My body be a patient weapon, pray. My body sing shrapnel when they stand their ground on me so they know this land mine. This land mine. This land mine. The arrest exemptions in the state of Michigan. So what I'm talking about is very specific to this state, okay? So what I'll be reading is from legislature, okay? Um, this is legislature.mi.gov that I'm reading from, and it is Act 236 of 1961, and if anyone is recording, I'm going to make it really clear. So this is um, the MO MCL Act. 236 of 1961, 600.1821 arrest exemptions. Number one, that is really important. No female shall be imprisoned on any process in any civil action. That's a very fancy way of saying that you are to not be imprisoned or arrested for anything that is civil. So ladies, if you have a traffic ticket, if you have debts, things that are not violent crimes, you cannot be arrested, you cannot be in prison. You will not step out of your car, you will tell them that you know this law and you will show them that you have the law. I suggest that you print it out and that you have it with you and say, officer, no, you cannot. All right, so no minor under 16 years of age shall be in prison or in any process in any civil action. So our minors out here, because I know there's many of you, 14, 15 year olds, when you are minding your business and they're trying to target you, let them know you know your rights. Okay, so. What did you call for? What are your demands? You just called for your demands. You just called for your demands. Not the man is that you need. Oh, you said you were all evil. Oh, oh, but now once we want to Why 
Shall I feel the story? Why should the shadows comfort Why should my heart be lonely and for heaven and home when Jesus sees my portion of Yeah, 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 yeah